examples of forward, backward toss? Does that mean that's where it's really helpful? Yeah, or if you have some from off the back, because we, we kind of keep yeah. an eye. Uh, something that we've been um, alerting each other to lately is forward and backward thought. And, and, and what I'm finding is so many thoughts that just, I mean, they seem so commonplace and so familiar are really backward thoughts. So it's helpful to notice that because then you can, can start recognizing know, that the cause is really in my mind, the cause is not out there. I mean, something as simple as I can remember um, saying on a hot day that that I went and, and took a swim in the lake to cool off. Now, you know, that's not an unusual thought or a thing to say, right? But it's backwards. It's backwards because my being hot or my being cool has nothing to do with the 95 degree temperature, has nothing to do with jumping in a cool lake, it has everything to do with the thoughts of my mind. If I think the cause for my being hot is the sun and the temperature, see how that's placing the cause outside of myself. If I think that the cause for me cooling down is jumping in cool lake water, then the cause is outside of my mind, it's in the temperature of the lake water.
we had a rainy day in sports today, and oh, it was said, you know, I don't particularly care how many witnesses seem to be called or that cloud and dark weather is gloomy, you know. But that's just a, a kind of a concrete example of how how deep this ego thought system goes into our mind, and, and that as we start to generalize the principle, we start to bring power back to our mind. That's where the release is. Yeah. You know, it's like if, if there's nothing outside my mind, there really is nothing outside my mind, then, I mean, it's like, it's bliss all the time, right? It's bliss and joy if, if I choose bliss and joy, mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm the one that chooses. It has nothing to do with anything here. You know, it's like, wow, you know, I can give I'm really in charge here. Really I feel. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, choose at any moment, in any situation, under any circumstances, to be a total piece of joy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I give an example, too, of something like, this would seem like somebody who may come to a course group and say, well, wait a minute, I've got some examples. Now, for example, we'll say a, a young child or it could be a, a person or whatever, touches a hot stove and yanks the hand back. Now, once again, you know, we've learned, <laughs> so-called in this world, that that's why you don't touch hot stoves, because hot stoves will burn your fingers <laughs> if you touch burners or whatever. Never mind the fireworkers <laughs> who walk across the hot coals or a thousand... No, it's like the, the basic learning of the world is that the way it works is if you put your hand to a burner, that the heat from the burner <laughs> will touch right upon the nerve endings in your fingers. In, in physiology, they teach us that, and the impulses will be sent up to the brain, and usually there'll be a very quick reflex action, part of the hand to get away, and then and the pain is experienced to be caused by the burner, right? Doesn't that seem pretty logical and reasonable? So then we get into the Course of Miracles, and Jesus is saying that, that the mind makes all the decisions, and the body doesn't feel at all. In other words, it seems pretty radical to be told by Jesus the body doesn't feel. Like, what do you mean, Jesus doesn't feel? I feel hot, I feel cold, I feel pain, I feel tired. You know, my I feel body... Pleasure. I feel pleasure. I feel lots of things in my body, and Jesus is kind of saying, your mind's making all these decisions, and then it's telling the body how to feel, and where to feel it, too. So that in this instance, you know, when the... When the when the, when the hand touches the, the stove or the burner or whatever, in a sense, there's a, a message is sent to the body to feel the pain, for instance, on the fingers where things being touched. And the pain that's being felt is coming about because of the painful belief that I separated from God. Wow. That's, a, that's quite a tracing back. Now, let me do... Jesus, let me get this straight now. I'm feeling pain in my hands because of my belief in separation. Yeah, the belief that the mind believes that it's separated from God and it feels guilty, okay? It can't stand that guilt. Remember how he said it's intolerable. So it projects the guilt out onto the screen. In this particular instance, the guilt is being projected onto the fingertips. So it seems as if the hand touching the burner is where the pain's coming from. But actually, it's, in other words, as Jesus did, when, when you transcend the ego, when you actually, when you find that the guilt was silly and there's no guilt in the mind, then pain is impossible. In other words, the only reason pain comes about is it's a reinforcer, but it's not causative. It's just a projection of of a decision that's being made in the mind. So the, the guilty feeling is that we've separated from God. Why why is the guilt there? The type of guilt we're talking about in the mind now is a very very deep ontological guilt that basically is that the mind believes that it really has done something terribly wrong. And and that's because it believes it has separated from God. Because it has a body? No, that's just the cover for the belief. <laughs> but the belief took place at a mind at a mind level. It's kind of like I guess we talked about last night, into eternity where all is one, there crept a tiny mad belief, mad idea at which the Son of God remembered not to laugh. In other words, taking such a ridiculous idea seriously and actually belie believing, turning the mind and, and investing seemingly in, in this belief is where this ontological guilt starts. 